Good evening, my ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another session of Carnage. This is Captain Easy. If I'm sounding some somewhat strange, it's because I'm trying out a new mic, a new headset. So maybe that um, sounds a little bit better. I'm a little bit um, annoyed with uh, how it comes out normally. So um, we'll see about that. Uh, so today, this session, this is the start of a session. Everything will be about uh, Gibraltar, I think. Um, Spain is lost, and I think we will see within short German troops and lots of panzers will mass around Gibraltar, and we will of course defend it in in all kinds of way. We have a lot of fighters here, a lot of bombers, so we will try to secure as much air superiority as possible, and then bomb him, bomb the hell out of him. The airport in Seville is already bombed. Uh, I think it's probably recovered at least um, one level of, um, of airfield, but we will um, continue to make sure that it has nothing. I think they probably have range with uh, long range uh, fighters and bombers from uh, Madrid, which is a level two airfield, and Valencia, which is, I don't know how big that airfield is, but uh, it's... Um, Big enough. So that's what we're gonna have. It's me on UK, Maxi Boy on France, and France have a couple of planes available, which is very useful because this will be a lot about planes. Sir Henry is on Canada as usual, and the Canadians will hopefully help us if we're gonna do some landing activities around Gibraltar to to disturb or, or uh, the Germans. And then of course Alex is um, making sure that the Red Army is a lethal foe in the future. So with that, let's start. And we are rolling. Uh, and I will start by uh, adding a couple of more CAGs to my fleet down here. Because uh, as this will be a lot about Oh, you see a lot of panzers moving southwards, as I suspected. Uh, oh no. Uh, this will be a lot about uh, air superiority, I think. And uh, so it's important that we can use all the airfields that we have and also um, the, the CAGs, because they don't have any CAGs. May I intercept here? Uh, Germany is making runway cratering in North Africa, Oran. If you have anything to stop that, it would be perfect. Oh, they are. Well, not really. What about your fighters? They're up fighting, but they're uh, almost depleted. No, oh, but but you you are other four fighters then. Uh, yeah, I'll bring them down then. Because I have my cags, but you know they will get toast toasted fairly. Um, I'll see what I can do. I'll bring my four uh, semi-rested. Yeah, down. I'll send uh, planes to um, to the uh, to the ocean there, and uh, hope that I can um, intercept them on the way to Iran. Oh, they paradropped here. Naughty persons in Malaga. All right, so I need to. Stop this attack immediately. As the Battle of Gibraltar moved into a critical phase, Prime Minister Halifax held an emotional speech to the pilots of the Royal Air Force boosting their morale and eagerness before all the combats to come. May the fascist pilot fear us. Shortly thereafter, the air battles over Gibraltar and the vicinity started in earnest. After fending off the first raids by the Luftwaffe, the brave Hurricane pilots had to face the Italians. They were an inferior foe and was dealt with without too many casualties. After a few aerial skirmishes with the Italians, the Royal Air Force ordered in more hurricanes. This was timely as the Germans had planned a new large bombing raid. The German tactical bombers had a hellish run. 
flying into the fire of hundreds and hundreds of anti-aircraft guns and attacked by well-rested Hurricane pilots. They would not be back soon. The same happened with the Stuka bombers. The raids had some effect on the ground though, leaving Gibraltar burning, but as he would not return soon, the Brits would have time for repairs. But the Brit could attack too. The airfield in Sevilla was attacked again, and destroyed again. May the 4th, the Wehrmacht has initiated the ground assault on Gibraltar without any kind of bomber support. Blitzing panzers from all direction is a fearsome thing, but they are too few. There are so many Brits on that rock, fortified, camouflaged, dug in, supported by anti-tank guns and naval artillery. And the Germans consequently gave up after less than one day of fighting, leaving smoke and pansing wrecks in their wake as they pulled back. Was it all the Germans had? The infrastructure in Marbella had now been completely destroyed and the ground was all muddy. It was far from an optimal place to initiate a large offensive. Or did they just leave now? No. Reinforcements are inbound. They are just reorganizing. It will come a second wave. Very timely. British research on fixed provincial anti-aircraft guns had led to a breakthrough. Simply by placing the guns in specific patterns and streamlining the communication, the effectivity would improve. And then, the 11th of May, one week after the first attack on Gibraltar, the Germans came again. Alright, so the Battle of Gibraltar has started. Uh, they began with quite some good odds. They are trying to bomb here, you see, but his uh, bombers are taking quite a brutal punishment. Uh, from the beginning, he was 6%, went up to 7 but then I logged bomb him, and now he's got serious lack of supply here on all his three panzers. He's trying now to attack only from one province, and that is to put my defenders, uh, give, to give them stacking penalty. Which he success, which is a success, of course, fr from his side. So, um, oh, now the odds went up again, probably because he got supplied. Yeah, Maxi boy, could you have um, your f uh, fighter on, on in intercepts interception over Jerez de la Frontera? I will do that. Yes, because I'll try to log bomb him again because it proved quite effective. But I actually see the org on his panzers going down a little bit. And I think my units are still... well... Yeah, okay. So, do you have yours on uh, interception? Yes, sir. I'll do another... oh... another run. Because you see, Malaga is already down to zero, and um, this province is down to three. I hope I'll get it down a little bit more. Overstacking in from Terra. Yeah, of course, but you protect my uh, my bombers a little bit while doing so. So he's down to two. That's good. So let's hope he'll get some more supply issues. Anyway, these Panzers is just attacking on very few percent. Uh, okay, it's night, but it's uh, about 40 percent. My troops are at well, one, one thirty or so. 130. 
Well, so this is just the beginning. Uh, I will try to move some troops out of Gibraltar because right now I think he will just attack from one province at a time. And as you saw, I had quite a brutal um, stacking penalty and I want to get away from that. So I'll have to wait, of course, until he quit this first battle. But he will try to quit and restart very quickly. So we'll see how that goes. All right. One of the German panzers simply got too much heat and pulled back. The remaining two panzer divisions had a hard time in the mountains. Enemies, anti-tank guns and artillery everywhere. The second attack on Gibraltar was called off, but more enemies were inbound. This was not over. Not over by far. Italy had given troops and support to the Germans, losing their islands in the process. Now they wanted a piece of their own. The Swiss would have no chance. In order to try and take some heat off Gibraltar, the Canadians invaded Barcelona, valuable to its ports, airfield and resources. The Germans quickly responded. They came with planes and infantry, and street fighting soon raged through the beautiful city. And then, one night in late June, the Germans attacked Gibraltar again. This time, it was no weak panzer attack from a single province. This time, it was a swarm with mountaineers, artillery and engineers, who methodically moved up the mountains. The British defense were optimized for panzers and planes, and that had worked. But all the anti-tank and anti-air guns had little effect against this foe. The forts exploded one after the other, and the Brits lost ground. Panic crept into the British leadership. Suddenly, divisions started to break and shatter, fleeing onto awaiting boats. The leadership was torn by the eagerness to reinforce and the fear that some of the retreating troops would not have any boats to go to. As amphibious counterattacks towards the flanks of the enemy proved ineffective, the defense more or less collapsed. This was not their finest hour. All right, uh, as you have seen, things are not going well in Gibraltar. I'm actually a little bit surprised myself. We have worked so hard to give him supply problems. You see the terrain all around here is, is logged bomb completely and I know Maxi Boy with French bomber have bombed a lot here in France but it did not really help so we are we are losing Gibraltar and that's um, and that's a shame huh? I just got in some new troops but uh, it won't help I mean he's got so much more to throw in so yeah they will just be pancake and so we will lose Gibraltar. That's that's bad. It went a little bit faster, oops, <laughs> than I thought. Um, but there it is. Gibraltar was lost the 2nd of June, resulting in the stunning loss of more than 50,000 men. It certainly was costly for the Axis too, but this was still a catastrophe. Now the Mediterranean was partly closed and the British situation was a lot worse. As much as 14 British divisions fled in chaos out to a luckily large fleet of transport ships. It would take some time to move out of the ruins of Gibraltar and properly embark. Gibraltar was now completely destroyed. Infrastructure was just rubble, every fort blown to pieces and even the airfield was gone. So, um, Alex, what's happening in Persia? Yes, uh, the uh, brave mountaineers of the Soviet army is pushing through the mountains here in uh, a rather slow pace currently. But you're there closing are... in on the capital here. That must be a huge moment. Exactly. They are defending it with a mighty force of two infantry divisions. <laughs> All right. uh, <laughs> the only major thing is the uh, oil in the Persian Gulf that uh, can be nice to prevent the axis 
from having access to without a fight. Yeah, yeah. Uh, good. So that's that's good news. Uh, of course, it's a lot better news than this Gibraltar thing. Ah, that was painful. Actually, Gibraltar fell a lot faster than I had hoped. Uh, it was all these forts and all these air bases, but still, in the end, uh, we couldn't really keep up the air superiority. We we did good for quite a while, and we did a lot of log bombing around Gibraltar and and also here in in, in France. But it didn't really well. It wasn't uh, enough by far because honestly, they they crushed us in Gibraltar. It wasn't even a, a close victory. It was a they had reserves even, so they really won in Gibraltar. So now we have to go to the next phase. And I don't even know what that is. <laughs> so we will have to have a hard think here and, and see what will be the best to do. Maxi Boy, what do you think we should do? Well, I think we should pay some attention to what's happening around Suez. Yeah, I'm just actually sending reinforcements there. Yes, they just arrived. And as soon as our air forces are rested, I think we should pick up basically some strat bombing as well. Yeah, X. Yeah, I have some. Now I'm actually maybe no, he probably got away. And of course, there's Denmark that they're probably. Yeah, looking. Denmark, of course. Yes, I got one more German uh, sub. That's good. The Salzwedel. Yeah, I have uh, an infantry division here in Katgat, and he will be prepared to quickly as hell go into Odense should the Germans uh, declare war on Denmark. So we'll see about that, about their next step. During the 21st of June, about three weeks after the fall of Gibraltar, Italy declared war on Yugoslavia. The Axis wanted it all. Was this an opportunity for the Allies to get back on the Fascists? Well... We'll see. <laughs>